Hi everybody, this is Ian here at Ableton at Tech in Burbank. And today we're gonna to look at the Sound Device 302 field mixer and the 702T field recorder. The 302 mixer is an awesome little piece of equipment, spectacular sound out of this thing, and very diverse. Uh, you can put three signals into here, but in addition to that, you can actually add two more on an input on the side, which are labeled four and five. Uh, the three signals here have your master gain and your faders. You also can allocate where the channel from that input is going to go, so it's just left, right, center. Uh, the metering system here, 19 positions on it, you can monitor in PPM or in VU or a combination of both. There's actually an internal setup menu in here that you can go into and you can set up all those things to the way you like. Uh, once those are set, you're good to go. It remembers it. It's a non-volatile memory. Set it once and you're done. The, uh, on the side here, on our outputs, two three-pin XLRs. So we can take this directly to a camcorder. And if we do that in that scenario, there is a return right here so that we can monitor the audio that's being recorded in the camcorder. So uh, in that scenario, we would not be sending the signal out to a recorder. We're going directly to the camcorder. The other scenario is we could take those signals out and put them into the 702T and then record to media on that uh, machine. In addition, we can also do a mix out on a TA3. It's a little three pin connector. And what the AES is for, it's for sending it out to uh, kind of prosumer machines, like a mini disc recorder, uh, things of that nature. If you need to make a backup or things like that, that's a uh, perfect application for it. As far as powering the machine, you can use three double A's or you can go into a four pin Hiroshi right here. That's probably the most practical way to handle this machine because keep in mind that if you're doing a sound pack, uh, you're, you're not only monitoring or powering this up, but you're probably monitoring or powering up other stuff as well. So it makes sense to have one battery in your kit and like a distribution cube or something like that. This way you're not, you know, changing batteries all the time and you're not putting those batteries into a landfill. So it makes a lot of sense to use a rechargeable battery with these kind of setups. Um, the way that this has been engineered, and this is true of all the sound devices gear, all your critical controls are on the front of the machine. So once it goes into a bag, you never have to scramble or fumble around to try to change a parameter that you need to check. Um, and all the inputs are on the side for your cabling, and you can also monitor with your headphones right here. And on the front, we actually have a little detent knob that goes in and out and changes the volume of your headphone monitoring. You might want to keep this on the lower end when you set this up for the first time because this is a nice amplifier. If you put it midway, you're gonna rock your eardrums. Uh, next to it is a knob that allows us to select what signal we're gonna hear. So in other words, we can isolate uh, one of the three inputs. We can also listen to everything together. So there's a lot of different uh, selections in here. Uh, one and two, can actually be linked together for a stereo input. And in the center, there's a reverse polarity switch. Uh, if you don't use stereo inputs, you'll never use this. But be aware that if you inadvertently turn it on and you reverse the polarity and you put a regular mic into input number two, you're not gonna hear it. So before you send it back to sound devices, check that and make sure it's working because there have been situations where that has happened. The back of it is completely clean because, like I said, the idea is to have everything that you need right up front and your connectors off to the sides. 302, uh, really small, lightweight, beautiful little machine, and it delivers fantastic sound. Even if you're only using one microphone and going to a camcorder, this is a great thing to have because it's going to make the sound quality going into the camera so much better and you have so much more control over it as well. Hi, my name is Martin with uh, Sanken Microphones, distributed by Plus24. We're in West Hollywood, and I'm showing you the new version of the CS1, which is the CS1E. Um, came out uh, last year, and the improvement is, is that it is lighter. It's only 80 grams uh, heavy, so it's very easy to handle on a boom. It's also short enough to be mounted on a camera. We improved the CS in the CS1E the signal to noise ratio, so it's a little quieter than the CS1 without the E. 
and uh, it's also a little bit more directional. Uh, the side rejection has been improved and as all the Sankin shotguns it doesn't have a rear lobe so you don't get any reflection from a wall or from background noise and that gives it much more reach than other shotguns, uh, even shotguns that are much longer. And it's available at all the Sanka dealers like Coffee Sound and True Audio. The best way to review any piece of equipment is to use it in the field. The CS1E is a competent microphone out in the field. However, used for close miking or studio work, it is simply one of the best microphones I have ever experienced. I had the opportunity to record a range of historical firearms from a museum collection. This was not done in a studio situation, but in a regular office environment. Again, I used both the Sankin CS1E and my regular shotgun microphone, and the results spoke very clearly in favour of the Sankin. I have never experienced a microphone capable of capturing such quiet signals so clearly without also capturing considerable room ambience and external noise. The CS1E constantly captured clean and clear recordings of even the subtlest of sounds. By comparison, my regular mic was constantly picking up outside traffic and room hum. The CS1E is capable of a wide range of purposes, but within the confines of a studio situation, I would call this microphone peerless in terms of sound quality for money spent. Its frequency range and sensitivity make it suitable for both dialogue and sound effects recording, and its compact size means there is no excuse for not having it on you for those occasions when its strengths make it the only choice to use.